What's going on guys, PC here, and welcome to another episode of I'm Playing. Today I'm playing Rune Jade on the Sega Dreamcast. This, as you can tell by the title screen here, is a role-playing network game, or network role-playing game, I don't know why I'm reading that backwards, uh, or otherwise known as an MMO. This is actually the first online RPG on the Dreamcast. It actually came out four months before Fantasy Star Online, which is interesting. So it actually might be the very first console or online console RPG RPG, which is interesting. It was developed by Hudson, who you may know as the developer behind the Bomberman series, so a little bit of a, a different game for them. <laughs> uh, press the wrong button there. <laughs> it's all in Japanese, as you can tell, and it is very, very heavily Japanese, so it's a little bit difficult to actually navigate your way through this game, which is kind of one of the reasons I wanted to do a video on this, because I actually muddled through this game before and I was able to actually get into a game which is a lot more difficult than you may think and I'll, I'll kind of go into it as we're playing here so I'm just gonna pick a character go with the ninja guy here and uh, it's asking for a name for your character it does have English characters which is nice or English letters Alright, so we'll accept that and we'll go right into the game here. So when you first start the game, you start off in a village, which is kind of your hub for the game. Uh, similar to PSO, where you have where you have the, uh, the ship, which uh, for some reason I can't recall the name of it right now. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the spaceship you start off in is kind of the main hub where you have shops and, and uh, places where you can store your weapons or store your items and things like that get healed and all that good stuff and that's basically what this is here what's interesting is each character that is in the game has a different hub or a different village which is very unique uh, but yeah you can do everything from here you can start an online game if you want to do that or you can do offline missions which apparently there are quite a few offline missions you can do uh, so you don't need to be online to play it, which is good, because there are no servers for the game. So anyway, I'm going to go in here. This took me a long time to figure out, and I actually have a little bit of a tip here. If you're going to try and play this game, use Google Translate on your phone, use the camera option, and it has a sort of augmented reality translator. So you can point the phone at the text on the screen, and it'll actually translate it albeit very badly translated. Uh, some of the stuff is absolutely hilarious that it comes up with, <laughs> which actually kind of makes the game a bit more fun to play. Uh, but yeah, it's very difficult to understand what the translations mean. You kind of have to put things together and, and kind of piece things together like a puzzle. But, <laughs> but yeah, so what I figured out is you have to go up here to talk to this guy. Every town has a mayor. I, I believe he's a mayor. And you got to talk to him first. He'll go through a bunch of text there, and he'll tell you to actually go talk to the receptionist, which is usually at the bottom left. In the two towns that I've been in, the receptionist is... Actually, no, she's not the receptionist. Bottom right. <laughs> in the other town I was, where I, where I played the knight, uh, it, she was on the left. So I believe this is the receptionist in this town. And she tells me, unless this is the... Maybe this is the receptionist. No, no, because she's selling stuff. So uh, these people over here... Oops. <laughs> Didn't mean to go in there. Uh, this guy's a blacksmith. He sells weapons uh, and then this lady and this lady down here sell other things. I'm not sure exactly what exactly, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, they sell things. But anyway, the receptionist told me to go to the priest who is over here, I believe. I think this it's this guy here and he drops these cards. So you want to pick up the cards and then go into your inventory. I believe... Um, where are they? Um, here? Somewhere. Let me use my translator. I forget which one it is. But yeah, it's very handy, especially for the inventory to, to uh, be able to figure out a translation for these things. And I keep selecting the wrong thing here. Hold on one second. There we go. Yeah, so... I have a small sword. You start out with a sword, which is interesting because the first time I played this game I actually bought a sword thinking that I didn't have a weapon already. And yeah, so <laughs> so I ended up with two swords. And for some reason the translation is not working. So I'm just gonna... So I only have one card, so I assume it must be that thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I have two of that other thing, whatever that is. So I use the card, and I think... Do I have to... I think I do have to talk to the priest again. I could be wrong, but I'm going to talk to him anyway. And then I have to go back to the mayor and talk to him again. It's a very long process. <laughs> Just to get from the town. Um, okay, hopefully I did this right. Can I talk to her again? Oh, come on! Okay, I did this before, and, uh... Hold on, I might have to jump cut here. <laughs> okay, so I finally figured it out, I guess? I don't know. I just pressed a whole bunch of buttons, and eventually it did something. So, now she's offering me a quest. So, I'm gonna select the top option here. And, uh, yeah, so you select these gems. I, I don't know why, but yeah. You have, I only have one gem, so I'm gonna select that one. And uh, we're gonna go off to a mission. So yeah, it's a bit difficult. Even with the translator on the phone, it, it's crazy. You have to kind of piece things together and figure out what to do. But anyway, this is not the mission that I played previously. I played the knight character, and he had a different mission. So, yeah, I don't even want to talk to these people because they're just gonna sell me stuff, and I don't need anything right now. So, let's see. I believe I'm supposed to go to that red square on the map. There we go. So, now we're gonna head on into the dungeon here. Alright, here we go. Bunch of treasure chests here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> there are clay monsters in those chests, apparently. At least that one, anyway. So that was bogus. There was absolutely nothing useful in any of those chests. I mean, I suppose killing the monster does give me some experience points. Which is always nice. There we go, so we got some gold. I instinctively press the attack button to pick up things in this game, mainly because that's what you do in PSO. Which does get kind of annoying because I'm trying, and when I don't want to actually pick something up and I'm trying to attack an enemy, I end up picking it up anyway unless my inventory is full. So it's actually kind of nice that this game has an alternate button for picking things up. Uh, apparently this is a dead end, okay. I like how my character has a, uh, a different icon on the map, depending on which character you choose. My guy is kind of a ninja star, and I believe the knight was it was something else. I didn't even notice that before, but yeah, I noticed he's a, a ninja star, which is kind of cool. I, I assume that helps when you're playing multiplayer. You can actually see your unique icon on the map, assuming the other people are playing different types of characters. And none of these treasure chests have anything in them. It's a spinny eyeball thing with spikes. So these are pretty much the same enemies that I've run into previously. There are these clay monsters. Oh, jeez. I've never seen those before. Samurai skeletons. That's pretty cool. Oh, jeez. Uh, apparently these eyeballs have some sort of fireball spell. So they're slightly different than the ones I encountered before. They didn't have any sort of spells. Ooh, a sword. Cool. All right, they dropped a whole bunch of loot. I picked up some sort of gem. Let me use the translator and see what I picked up. I picked up Sky Jade of and a dagger. Okay. So I picked up a jade and a dagger. I don't know what the jade is used for. Maybe you just sell it for some money. So I have no idea what my mission is, <laughs> so I'm just basically going through here killing things. It would be awesome if someone would actually make a translation of this game. A proper translation would be fantastic. I mean, using Google Translate is definitely not ideal. <laughs> the translations it gives you, some of them are pretty hilarious, I gotta admit, but uh, they don't help you all that much with getting through the game, although, I mean, they did help me figure out how to actually start a mission, since I could not figure out, figure that out for the life of me. 
I mean, even with the translation, it was pretty difficult. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, mainly because they were really bad translations. <laughs> if there were good translations, I probably would have figured it out faster. But if anyone else out there knows Japanese and English and, and knows how to modify Dreamcast games, please make a translation of this. This would be fantastic. Because it's not a bad game. If you like uh, this so sort of uh, dungeon crawling RPG similar to Diablo, I mean, this is, it seems like a pretty solid game. I mean, I haven't played all that much of it. I played part of a dungeon, mainly just so I could figure out how to get into the game and actually start playing it, rather than just aimlessly wandering around the village talking to people. Which makes for quite a boring video. So at least I gave you guys a little bit of a tutorial if you want to try and play this game yourself, at least kind of know what to do. You know, talk to the mayor first, and then go to the priest, pick up the quote-unquote spill cards. I don't know if that's a decent translation or not, but uh, yeah, spill cards is uh, what Google Translate told me they were. So you pick those up, you use them, and then you talk to the mayor again, then, then you talk to the receptionist, and you can start a mission. What that mission is exactly, I don't really know. So I'm just gonna kill bad guys. And uh, hopefully I'll actually finish the mission. But of course I, I don't even know how to turn in the mission after I finish it. Maybe I talk to the receptionist again? I don't know. But that's a that's a whole nother mission right there. <laughs> or maybe the game will be nice and it will just automatically end the mission and uh, give me some money. I don't know. <laughs> All right, picked up some goodies there. I'm curious if there are any uh, boss battles of any sort in this. I assume there probably are. These initial dungeons definitely do not seem very difficult because I'm losing hardly any life and I've been attacked by quite a few enemies so far. Oh, actually, I think I passed where I was supposed to go. I believe the mission objectives are those red squares on the map. It's where I had to go initially to get into the dungeon, and I believe those... Uh, that's where I'm supposed to go once I'm in the dungeon as well. More doors lead down farther into the dungeon. Yeah, okay. So I completely missed this area. Most of these treasure chests are just rip-offs. <laughs> have nothing in them. Okay, so we'll go down there. See what's down here. Oh! Another ninja. Is that a zombie ninja? <laughs> Wish I could play as a zombie ninja. That would be pretty cool. Although this guy moves so slow, he could be a non-zombie ninja. <laughs> It is definitely not a fast-paced game, that's for sure. Which is fine. I mean, it's an RPG. It's not supposed to be very fast-paced, although there are faster-paced RPGs out there than this one. <laughs> although, to be fair, I am playing as a ninja, so maybe he's trying to be stealthy. <laughs> but even the knight moved pretty slow, although he could... I suppose account for that by the fact he's wearing heavy armor, so can't move very fast. <laughs> but yeah, I assume all the characters in the game probably move at the same pace. Ah, I picked up another spill card. Okay, so I'll go down farther into the dungeon, into the depths.
Oh, jeez. What the heck are those things? Um, hmm. <laughs> I don't even know what to call those. Uh-huh. Uh, they have some colorful outfits on, though. I picked up something there. What is that? Let me quickly translate this. That is a clove. I don't know what a clove of. Uh, a clove of garlic, I suppose. So if I run into a vampire, I'll be all set. There are some strange looking enemies in this game. I assume that's a female ninja? Female zombie ninja? I don't know. <laughs> or maybe they are male. I don't know. They just like pink outfits, I suppose. Definitely a lot more enemies down here. Seems as you, as you get farther down into the dungeon, it gets more and more dangerous. But I like danger. Danger is my middle name. But it's nice because this part of the game, you don't need to read anything, really. <laughs> I mean, other than the things you pick up, which are fairly easily translated. At least most of them are one or two words. You're not trying to translate a whole paragraph, which is what you're trying to do when you're trying to talk to the people in the town. So, yeah, at least these parts are... are are fairly playable even if you don't understand Japanese especially if you have a phone with Google Translate on it you can pretty easily figure out what the items you are uh, the items that you pick up are so that's pretty nice I'm gonna head this way I think this is probably the direction I'm supposed to go so I picked up something there what is that I picked up a sword cool I already have a sword. I'm not sure if that's better than the one I have. Let me check. Uh, so the inventory... So these are various uh, equ equipment items. So... Okay, so I have a couple. I assume these are the weapons. One of them's rated at 12, which is the one I have equipped, and there's another one that's 10, so I guess that's the one I picked up. So it's not as good as the one I have, so that's no good. Alright, still doing fairly well here. Haven't lost much health, which is good because I don't think I have any sort of health potions or anything. I probably could have bought some, but I chose not to. So yeah, I'm winging it here. If I die, I die. That That's pretty much it. It's the end of the road. <laughs> I'm getting far down into the dungeon here. Cool. I like the squishy sound effect it makes when I actually hit an enemy. It's like I'm fighting jello. <laughs> okay, so this was a dead end. Oh, that sucks. Alright, so we'll head back up here and take a left. I could actually take a right up here as well, but I think I'm going to go this way. I gotta say, I'm actually quite enjoying this. When you're not reading through endless lines of Japanese text, it's actually pretty fun. I imagine this would be a lot of fun online as well. I mean, just about any online game is fun. I mean, when you're playing with other people, it, it, I think it, it it just really increases the fun factor, even if, even if it's not a very good game, even if it's a mediocre game. Playing with other people just makes it all that much more fun. And I'm sure Shuoyuma could probably whip up a server for this game if he really wanted to. I don't think it's... It's something that he would put uh, much effort into right now because of the fact that there's no translation for it and people would have a little bit of a difficulty playing it. But I'm sure after a while it would uh, you'd get used to it 
once you actually figure out some of the things that you're looking at, like the items and stuff, you, you might be able to eventually figure out what they mean without having to use a translator. But yeah, it is, it is a bit of a pain. Just makes it a little bit more difficult to play than it should. I did level up. It actually says at the t bottom left there, with that little up arrow. I don't know if you can actually do anything when you level up. I, I think you can increase stats, because that actually continually blinks. I'm not sure how you do that, though. I have not tried that. You might actually have to go back to town to do that. I'm not sure. But yeah, that, that continues to blink until you do something, so... Oh boy, I am being attacked by very many samurai skeletons. Oh jeez, my health is running low. <laughs> About down at the halfway level now. These samurai skeletons do a lot of damage. And again, I don't have any sort of health potion, so I'm kind of screwed, unless I picked up one. I picked up a what I thought was a red gem, but it's possible that could be a potion of some sort. I actually do have quite a few things here. Can I use that? Oh, there we go. Okay, so I did have a health potion. Cool. Yeah, so that was pretty easy to figure out, because when I actually went to that item, see it says HP in the bottom uh, box there. So that was pretty easy to figure out, even without a translation, so that's cool. Ooh! New spinny eyeballs. So these are... maybe ice eyeballs, and those other ones were fire eyeballs? I don't know. <laughs> Picked up another one of those red robes, whatever those are. Don't know if they're better than what I have, but come on. The game does uh, only work with the D-pad for movement, which is a little bit clunky, but it does work. I mean, it's not like you're doing all that much precise movement in the game, so it works. And they actually do use the analog stick for something, which I'll show you in a second once I kill these skeletons here. And this eyeball. There we go. Yeah, so the analog stick you can use for shortcuts. So at the bottom right there, I assume what you can do, and I haven't actually tried this, I assume you can assign different items to these different slots. Very similar to PSO's uh, shortcut system. And so you can quickly use a, a potion of some sort. Or a, a spell, assuming there are spells. I have no idea what I just did there. I did some sort of magic spell. Man, this guy is big. I'm just gonna try and avoid him. Hey, not bad. I picked up something. What did I pick up? I picked up a... Uh, Thirty thousand darts. 30,000 darts? <laughs> okay, uh, that's not a very good translation, I'm assuming. <laughs> I don't know, I picked up something. And I assume since it, he was uh, quite a large enemy, he probably dropped something pretty good. Ooh. That was a prehistoric dinosaur man. <laughs> okay, I need some health. Okay, let's use a potion. Cool. So here are my stats here. I wonder if I can do anything from here. That There's one that's red. I don't know what that one is. It doesn't seem like I... Oh, wait. Oh! Okay, so those are the points that I can assign to things. Okay, cool. Let me see if I can translate this. Um, okay, maybe not. It's not really doing a very good job trying to translate this. 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of evenly distribute my points here. Okay, so when I did that, my HP went up. Right there. Okay, so that's HP. And... Okay, that one's MP. Okay, cool. So at least I figured that out. This little uh, building here. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. This is not good. This is not good. Holy moly. Crap. Crap. <laughs> um. Um. Do I have a, a very large spell that I can <laughs> kill these guys with? Oh, jeez. I'm not going to survive this, am I? Oh, man. Okay, I'm just going to try and slash and run. Slash and run. Slash and run is not working. <laughs> slash and run is not working. Oh, boy. I don't think I have any health potions left, so I may be dead here. Holy moly. Um, okay, so I can move and do things at the same time. I'll use that. I don't know what that does. I don't think I have any health po Oh, wait. Okay, I do have health potion. Good, 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 good. I don't know if I can actually beat these guys anyway, but I'm going to try. There we go. One down. I'm just going to face them head on here. <laughs> I don't know if there's really much of a point in running. Okay, I'm doing pretty good here. Come on. Okay, cool. Oh, why didn't you die? There we go. Cool. Bunch of gold. There must be something good in this building here. If there were that many enemies in there. There's a gem. That's cool. A couple treasure chests. I don't know what that is. Can I translate that? I might be able to translate that. Let's try it. Oh, 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 oh! Dinosaur man! <laughs> Where did you come from? Die! Trying to translate. Don't interrupt me. Oh, shoot. The text is gone now. <laughs> oh, well. Stupid dinosaur man. Now I don't know what I got. Okay. Well. That's that. Oh, the red door is over there. I just noticed over to the right. I don't know if I'm actually going to finish this mission because it, it seems quite long. Would be cool to actually finish it though. Oh, I leveled up again. Cool. Man, a lot of these eyeballs. Jeez. Okay. Oh, it's another building here. Oh no! Man! Oh, I can just kill them as they're coming out the door. That works. Come on, line up for death, people. Get in line for death. Sweet! Hey, picked up an axe. I don't need to translate that because I can pretty clearly tell that's an axe. Sweet! Yeah, so I think I'm probably going to end the video here because, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this in a reasonable amount of time. But I think you guys got a good idea of the game. Which is cool because I don't think there are too many videos on YouTube showing this game other than the main hub town, which I'm sure a lot of people have a hard time getting past. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, surprisingly so. I didn't really think I could actually get a decent amount into this game. But, uh, yeah, I actually am getting into this game. It's fun. Uh, once you actually get past the Japanese text, you, which, like I said, you can use Google Translate on the phone with the camera function, and that works well enough just to get by. You're not going to be able to tell anything as far as the story. <laughs> if there is a story, which I assume there is some sort of storyline to it. But as you can see, I'm navigating the menus by myself now without using any sort of translation, so it can be done. 
<laughs> but anyway, guys, this has been Rune Jade on the Dreamcast. It's a fairly cheap game if you want to check it out for yourself if you're into these sort of games. The dungeon crawler genre. It's, I, I think, worth checking out for the price. It's probably about, I think I paid about 10 bucks for it, including shipping from Japan, which is not bad. And hey, there's always a chance this game may come back online in the future. You never know. But uh, hopefully a translation. Uh, at least a translation would be really cool. But uh, anyway, guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.